Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So in, in the last episode, I spoke about the AI development lifecycle, right? How you should be building it and how uh, from the planning to the deployment uh, comes into equation. Now, here I wanted to talk about ethical use and personalization. Now, this is a very important topic. And if you are someone or if your company is looking to build an AI solution using Salesforce, or for that matter, using any other technology, right? Using, uh, you know, Microsoft or using AWS or or you, you are doing custom in-house development using PyTorch or TensorFlow or any other technology, right? You need to factor a few things into consideration when it comes to ethical use in personalization. So what I meant by ethical use in personalization, obviously, you know, you as a business, right? So... I like the straw man analogy. My straw man sucks, right? So, yeah, this is the head, this is the leg, and this, right? So you are, a, let's say you are a customer, right? So the, I'm a customer, and I'm dealing with a business, right? Let's say company, yeah? Now, if I'm dealing with a company, obviously, I as a customer have few expectations from a company. For instance, let's say if I'm buying, let's say for instance, right, I buy grocery uh, in New Zealand online from a from a different uh, retailers. Countdown I use, New World I use, right. So I have certain expectation when I'm a regular customer when I'm buying uh, certain things uh, from a company. The first expectation is that obviously I like. Uh, to buy the products which I'm interested into, right? Obviously, I would like, uh, you know, the things which I wanted to buy should be available. And and secondly, I wanted to uh, look for the price tag, right? I, I shouldn't be paying, for instance, a, a one kg cheese uh, for the, say, for instance, of certain brand at different prices if I have to deal with a different vendor. So, for instance, if I, for instance, if in a countdown, if, if a cheese of the same brand costs, let's say, $15, and if it's, say, in a New World supermarket, if it costs me, let's say, $11, uh, then I would think, mm, should I be buying from Countdown this time, or should I be using <clears throat> uh, New World? i just give you a simple example how the user normally thinks, right? So, if, and, but that being said, right, <clears throat> uh, the ethical use and personalization is not just about that. I'm just giving you a, a context so that we can get to that, right? So bear with me. So at uh, this user, right, let's talk about another scenario, right? This user uh, wants to, uh, <clears throat> uh, say, buy clothes, right, from an online uh, clothing company. Now, this specific user buys T-shirt, jeans, uh, right, and perhaps hat, right? And the specific user buys a certain kind of hat. Now, <clears throat> imagine, obviously, when you are buying that information, right, you obviously have to log in, right? When you have to log in, you provide <clears throat> your information, right, the first name, last name, and perhaps, you know, your address. Now, this is what I call the, the, the collection of, of personal information from a customer because obviously you have to fill in certain information and now what company can do right the company can use that information and use your the the use your buying pattern to recommend you uh, a product based on something you buy let's say for instance you buy all these let's say Kelvin CK t-shirt right and if there is there must be a Gucci uh, something else, maybe, you know, I don't use buy Gucci products, so I can't really say. I, I usually wear CK stuff, but uh, anyways, so let's say if you're buying a CK stuff, right, perfume, um, and then if you're buying a CK t-shirt, um, so your company can use that, your buying pattern to recommend another CK product, because obviously if you're always buying the CK, like your CK clothes, you, you know, CK, CK in their wear, CK t-shirts, right, and perfume. So you can always recommend another uh, product. But the problem with that is that if you are collecting that information from a user, 
right? If, if, if let's say a clothing company collects an information from me, my first name, last name, even my email address, I expect that, you know, they use my information in the right way uh, rather than misusing that information. So that's an expectation a user have it. So for instance, I do not want them to use my information to to spam me with constant emails to say, hey, we got new this product, we got this product, we got that product, we got this product, we got that product, right? Then obviously I have to put that email into spam, right? And obviously it won't be interested to deal with that business anymore. So so the companies have to, first of all, uh, when you collect an information, right? It's a moral responsibility of a company that to inform the customer why they're collecting the uh, the personal information and how that's going to be useful. Right? If, if someone tells me, right, okay, we're going to collect your, let's say, first name, last name, and email so that we can email you for any promotion or any discounts in the future associated with the brand you often tend to buy. Okay, that makes sense, right? Because obviously, uh, you know, I buy, say, for instance, uh, CK perfume all the time. And if there's a new perfume from CK, if I get to hear about that, if there's a discount on existing product, Sweet, I'll be interested. But if they, but on the other hand, if they want to use my email address to send me information about Gucci, Armani, which I don't normally buy, then those information is irrelevant. Then I will wonder why are they using my email to spam me, right? So you need to be careful uh, when if you are as a business, you're dealing with certain information. Uh, when it come, when you're dealing with the client data, you have to be careful. You have to take a concern, not just having a concern in in, in like in uh, in your website somewhere, which nobody no one often reads. Say, oh, we have this statement. Say, we will make ethical use of your personal data. That's just not good enough because no one will read it, right? So if you are wanted to do something that you have to take a concern, right? Perhaps if you if you the place where you fill out the information of or place where you ask the user to register it, you can perhaps say that we're going to use this information for X, Y, Z stuff, right? That will give user a very better understanding about what they wanted to use with the data. And there are certain scenarios where you don't really have to collect the user first name and last name. Um, so you can obviously do not have to force user to do that because if you're going to use that, then obviously you need to give user the reason why you wanted to do that. And also you have to understand that I as a customer, right, I associate with a business because of the service I get. And if I, you know, if I'm not getting what I want, obviously, you know, I will not associate with the business because I, if I'm not getting what I want, like I said, you know, why should I be investing my money in a company, right, which first of all, A, do not give me the service I'm looking for. Second, they collect my data and who knows what they're going to use my data for. So that's why it's very important. If you're giving to going to give a personal experience, like personal experience, I hope that you understood what I mean by personalization for now, right? Another example I would like to give, right? If you are, let's say if you are a person who deal with, you might have seen Netflix experience, right? If you, uh, Netflix often do recommendation. Hey, you've been watching this video, perhaps you can watch this one as well, right? That's based on your, and they use uh, uh, maybe recommending uh, recommender system behind the scene uh, to and use the artificial intelligence engine behind the scene based on your you know browsing pattern based on your viewing sorry based on your uh, the selection of the uh, movies you watch it often end up recommending uh, based on your previous history so they in fact use your personal data for that stuff right. Uh, but the, so obviously you know what you're getting at when you're signing up with Netflix. So and they let people know that what they're going to use uh, that information for. Now, also another thing I wanted to mention is the uh, is the channel of communication, omni-channel, right? It's are you going to uh, because sometimes companies use chat, sometimes companies use SMS, sometimes companies use email, so. It does not always work uh, with the right every every channel with the, with every user. For instance, some people do not like to give up their phone numbers, right? So they prefer to use email. So if you have an email channel of con uh, communication, you got to respect that, right? You even if let's say for instance uh, in Salesforce, right? If you are uh, you can use a marketing cloud to create a personalized campaign, right? And the personalized campaign targets the user based on their 
uh, requirement. Also, I just wanted to uh, mention uh, along, since we are talking about ethical use and personalization, uh, the kind of data, right, you use. Uh, you should use, you should not be, say for instance, I collect, uh, say for instance, if I'm collecting 50,000 user information, I should not be using that information to train my model, which serves a different purpose, right? So for instance, if I let customer know, right, hey, I'll be using your personal information so that we can send send out campaigns to you if they're, if you got a new offer, if you got a discount. But instead of that, if I'm going to use that customer information, right, to train my model to target, let's say, their food habits, right? Let's say the target, uh, the, uh, the demographic, right? For instance, if my company is also associated, let's say, in building anti-aging cream, right? Right? And I, if I'm collecting that user and to train my model to target them with, when it comes to anti-aging cream, that's an unethical practice because, first of all, I didn't took a concern from a customer to say, hey, uh, I'm going to use your data to train my model to do these things, right? Because what we agreed, we're going to use your data to send out a campaign associated with, let's say, Kelvin Klein uh, brands of clothes or perfumes. And if you're going to use that, then that's become an ethical issue, right? Because you're using my personal information for something which I didn't concern to or which I'm not even aware of. So you have to refactor all of this consideration when you're building a solution uh, when it comes to artificial intelligence, right? Because obviously people get very excited, they carry it away, and they say, hey, I've just, we have a privacy statement on our website, why do we care, right? So if you reach to that stage, then there is a serious problem, right? And, and if I, as a customer, get to know that company don't really care, I will not be happy to deal with that business whatsoever. And there's one a very beautiful example um, uh, Salesforce gave in one of the trailhead about the user experience uh, in terms of personalization, how you can help the customer. Let's say you wanted to book a plane ticket, right? Usually, let's say if I wanted to book a ticket to Europe, right? So for instance, if I wanted to take it to Europe, I look for airline um, and I say from New Zealand to let's say I wanted to book a ticket to Switzerland, right? Zurich uh, or right? Or let's say I wanted to book a ticket. Okay, let's say I wanted to book a ticket from um, New Zealand, uh, Wellington to um, Frankfurt, Germany, right? So I entered my first name, last name, and found the right ticket. Uh, uh, sorry, found the right deal. Entered my information. Suddenly someone called me, right? And I've forgotten about all of a sudden about my booking process, right? And I entered my information. I saved it. And then I've forgotten about it. And then... And my maid been, you know, talking to me over the phone for, let's say, 40 minutes. And then after I finished the call, imagine I got a call from the airline saying, hey, Mr. Cohen, um, you've been booking a flight with us uh, from uh, Wellington to Frankfurt. Uh, I presume that you haven't completed. Is that something you're still interested to proceed? So I like, oh, okay, thank you. So because I know that I've forgotten about it because my mate almost, you know, distracted me with this call, which is fine. But then I completely lost track of my booking process. So that's, I would say, a good example of uh, ethical use in personalization, the customer personal experience. And I know that my personal information has been used to help me, right? Because in this case, it's helping me. So you need to factor those things when you're collecting the user data. And so this, I know that this course is about artificial intelligence, so I, I didn't touch much about AI in this, but, you know, because when people talk about AI, they only they talk about fancy things you can do. They talk about you know fancy machines walking around doing things which humans can do, but nobody talks about the data collection, right? That's the most important part. You're obviously training your model using the data, and the tr and when you get the, the the data collection involves a lot of ethical and legal step. You cannot just grab the data without people consent, right? You cannot go to a website and grab the data and start training your model. Um, I mean. Obviously, if you don't want it to tell people, that's a, besides a different story, but then it becomes an ethical and legal issue, right? And and if I, as an individual, come to know that, oh, businesses are doing that, I obviously will say, I I don't, I can't associate with these people because they're using my data in the wrong way. So that's why this module is important. And, and I specifically wanted to do this module because 
you know, obviously going forward, you might be building chatbots, you might be building uh, different, uh, you might be training a model using the data. So just keep in mind, if you're targeting a customer to give them personal experience, please do a con concern and make sure that you collect the data, what is really required and make sure that whatever data you collect, you're adding value to the customer, right? If the customer sees you're not adding value, right? And they will say, please, I don't want my data to be used for anything. And I know that you might be saying that, oh, this guy is beating around the bush. It's not uh, exactly beating around the bush. It's just keep trying to make you guys understand the importance and severity of ethical use of the personal, or ethical use of customer data for their personalization journey. You can use Marketing Cloud. Marketing Cloud is a pretty amazing tool, um, which obviously have a lot of potential to send out their personal campaign to the, you know, personalized campaign to the different customers. And so that customer can benefit from that. And and that can only happen when you have a customer data, right? So, you know, you, you can see that, right? How collecting the data and making it useful for the customer is actually going to help the customer. Uh, as long as you make them aware that your data will be used and destroyed after a certain period of time. And that will obviously come as a part of a governance process, what you have in your business. If you're an architect, it's because your sole responsibility to have the governance process or maybe a document somewhere in a conference page to say, hey, we use this customer data and one, after a certain period of time, the customer data will be deleted from a system. We don't want to use it. We don't want to use it for any training purpose. There's no more information retained, right? And also, you need to also see how you're going to handle the backup options, right? Obviously, customer data get backed up. If when you talk about retention for a certain period of time, I have, and after that, if you're talking about deleting the data, customer data, are you talking about just deleting from, let's say, from a Salesforce org, or else you're talking about from all the backup uh, where you had the customer information? So you need to work out that. It needs to be part of your governance process and to see how you, you know, really do that stuff. So that's all I wanted to talk about in this episode. I hope you guys have an amazing Saturday. Adios.